reading your lamps will give a lot of rewards but it's a system that needs to have good levels of management both prior to the breeding season to get the right weight of joining during the breeding season to use the ram effect to keep it compact between breeding and lambing you need a plane and nutrition to keep the animal or self growing and from lambing until weaning you need to have a good plane and nutrition to keep the yo herself growing and also that her progeny reach good weights at the point of weaning and the target weaning weight for animals from your lambs will be approximately 30 kilos. Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Ovicast, the Chagas Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you this insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. We're at the stage of the season for many flocks where they need to consider what they're going to do with their yo lamb replacements, whether they're going to be joined or not. It's something I'm going to discuss in more detail in this episode with Dr. Tim Keady. We discuss some of the key factors and key drivers of the system, the impact of joining weight, the influence the ram effect can have on it. Tim offers his insights on the duration of breeding season and ram management during the main period. We discuss post mate management, with Tim emphasizing the importance of nutrition and the need to manage your lamb separately during the production cycle. We finish up the discussion talking about the potential knock-on impact of joining your lambs on subsequent performance. We start off, however, with Tim discussing the impact that joining new lambs can have on the productivity of a sheep system. Mate new lambs basically is a, a separate enterprise than your main new flock. I suppose if we start at the beginning, every flock needs replacements. And in the flocks in Ireland, approximately half the flocks uh, purchase replacements in the market and the other half rear their own replacements. When you bring a replacement into the flock, you have a choice either to join it at a, at, to, to lamb as a, at a yearling as one year or you can mate it at 18 months to, to produce its first set of lambs at two years of age. Uh, replacements is a major cost, and often a cost that's never discussed in sheep production. For example, to have a replacement coming into the flock at 18 months of age, the equivalent cost of that is equivalent to the value of 25% to the lamb carcass she'll produce during her lifetime. Uh, we, we've undertaken a number of studies here at Athen Rye looking at mating your lambs and we've looked at different new genotypes. And what we found was that if you're using a prolific new genotype, and an example of that would be a clear cross, we found that in them kind of scenarios that they had the ability to rear 1.2 lambs per ewe, jo- per ewe lamb joined. And that meant that uh, at today, that would be equivalent today where we're getting about 6 euros 30 per kilo lamb carcass them lambs were slaughtered at 20.5 kilos. That's equivalent to approximately 155 euros per ewe lamb joined uh, in terms of income onto the farm. Tim, you're quite right, and it's something you've discussed before in the podcast. The cost of keeping replacements, the investment that that represents in the flock, it's often not taken into complete context. Mate new lambs can potentially offset your when the system is run right. On that basis, Tim, like, what are the key drivers of a successful ewe lamb system? I suppose, Kieran, uh, there's a number of key drivers. The first one would be the weight at joining. That is one of the key drivers. The second one is how compact you have your mating season and how successful it is. The third one is nutrition post-mating up till uh, mid during mid and late pregnancy. The, the fourth one would be that you need to manage your, your lambs as a separate pl- flock post-lambing up till the point of weaning. Because the reason that I stress all these points is not alone are you ma- managing a pregnancy and an animal rearing its progeny, but you're also managing the animal itself or the old lamb itself so that she will attain a mature body life weight. Tim, way to join him. We're after coming through a difficult season. The rams going to go out with some of these old lamb flocks at the moment. What's the impact of way to join him? What should her target be? And is there a cut off there for flocks? Even those that are used to joining new lambs, should all the new lambs be joined this season or should there be a cut off point? Yes, the, I think the, the weight of joining is probably the critical factor affecting the success or otherwise of a, a breeding new lamb enterprise. The rule of thumb normally is that the objective should be at joining that the new lamb will be approximately 60% of its ma- potential mature live weight. So if we take an example of a belt clear across yo, which would have a mature live weight of 77 kilos, then any yo lambs that are being joined should be about 46 kilos. Whereas we take other um, terminal sire breeds, which would have heavier mature live weight of 83 to 85 kilos, their, their progeny should be approximately 50 kilos at the point of joining. However, every enterprise needs to have an efficiency goal. And when we're breeding your lambs, our efficiency measurement of an efficiency uh, target will be the probability of rearing at least one lamb. 
So if we set a target that for every year lamb we join, that we want a 90% probability of them rearing at least one lamb, then we have to be careful at the weight that we join them. And the reason we picked the probability of rearing at least one lamb is because it takes into account uh, yo and lamb mortality, and it also takes into account uh, yo barrenness. And when you, take, uh, when you consider all of these, we noticed that for prolific breeds, uh, that uh, the potential to, to, have, to, to have a probability of rearing at least one lamb, they would need to be about uh, 46, 47 kilos live weight. Whereas for breeds which would have a certain amount of terminal sires in them, such as Texel crosses and Suffolk crosses, for them to have a probability of rearing at least one lamb, they would need to be up at around 60 kilos live weight at the point of joining. And sim- the main reason for this is that they would have a lower pr- productivity or a lower prolificity. The, the weight at seven months is probably the most critical weight in the in the ewe replacement's lifetime. And the reason I say that is that our studies would show that if you vary the weight by about seven and a half kilos at joining, it impacts the probability of rearing at least one lamb by about 15% if you join them as your lambs. But it also has a carryover effect to when you join them as at 18 months to lamb at two, at two years of age, that the weight at seven months will have an impact on the probability of rearing at least one lamb at uh, of approximately 8 to 10%. So that tells me that the weight at seven months is the most important weight because it affects the probability of rearing at least one lamb when you join them as a yo lamb and also when you join them as a two tooth to lamb at two years of age. So in terms of the weight of joining, Kieran, I suppose on a practical point of view, if you're prepared to lower your target from 90% down to an 80% probability, then from a maternal uh, breeds, they would need to be greater than 45 kilos. And for some of the terminal sire breeds, they would definitely need to be between 50 and 55 kilos minimum before you join them. Tim, obviously that has a massive impact on productivity. I suppose like the one point we maybe didn't even clarify and that is them later yo lambs, the wood going lamb, there will be more work with them next year, mothering issues and other ways. So that joining weight is a massive, massive impact on the system. Well, it's a massive impact on the system for a number of reasons. Firstly, because you need to get them in lamb, and like your lambs don't cycle until later in the season. Secondly, it impacts on the probability of rearing at least one lamb. Thirdly, it will impact on the yo herself getting to her target mature body weight uh, when she's going when she's joined at eighteen months of age. And for, and last point, it will also impact on the perform on the birth weight of her lambs when they're born at one year of age, and also on their performance. So if you have very light your lambs that are joined that will go to the ram and mate it, that produce lambs, you may result in higher mortality or you will re- result in lambs that will be ver- will not have a high tribe and many of them will be on the farm next October, November and December, whilst at the same time their mother who is at 18 months of age will be a lower weight and a lower body condition and she'll have a greater probability of either not going in lamb or producing a smaller, a smaller litter size than what she's uh, genetically uh, capable of doing. Okay, so one key task at the moment is actually go through those lambs and actually weigh them, particularly the later in them, and make a hard decision on what should go to the ram or not this year for those that are in that system. You just make the decision when you're going through your lambs that you're, you're cutting off if they're maternal breeds at around 45, 46 kilos, and if they're terminal sire breeds that you're going to cut off at a higher live weight, and if the animal is below the live weight, seriously consider not joining them. Okay. Look, you mentioned cyclicity. Weight, obviously, is one of the factors that will hasten the onset of it. Tim, the use of the ram effect, it's another tool that we can actually utilise very effectively in your lambs. Would you just maybe outline that for our listeners and the impact it can have? Right. The, the ram effect basically involves putting a mature ram uh, in with the old lambs. Uh, and I, the way it works is that the pheromones released from the mature rams uh, will, uh, will be taken up uh, by the old lambs and th- that will start initiate them to cycle. What normally happens is that the, the, in the, when the ram effect is working, you'll get a, a, a short cycle after about two days in joining, and you'll get another short cycle again about six days in joining, and the ram is not capable or able to pick up any of these short cycles. And then they will cycle 17 days later. Our data shows that the handiest way to do the ram effect is to let the ram in on day one, remove them after 24 or 36 hours, Put in your fertile, and, and when you have a ram in with them, you should probably have an apron on them. So if there's any uh, a cyc- any cycling that he doesn't mate them, 
put in the mature rams at 14, day, at 14 days. The peak matings will occur at about day 18 and day 23. The reason we put in the ram at day 14 is, is if there's any short-cycled animals that the ram will pick them up, or if there's any animals already cycling before you induce the ram effect, that the ram will also pick them up. But as I said earlier, that day 14, there won't be a lot of activity for the ram between day 14 and day 18. There'll be a lot of activity around day 18, a lot of activity around day 23. Our data shows that you are successfully using the ram effect, that you will lamb approximately 70% of your sheep within two weeks of, of lambing commencing, and you will lamb about 90% of them within three weeks. So then, like the ram effect is going to get the ewe lamb cycling those that aren't already, and it's compacting the whole thing. Just when we are talking about rams, in terms of ram management with ewe lambs, is there anything different we need to consider than we say with a mature flock? Well, if you're using the ram effect, the first thing is the number of yours per ram. And uh, we we always are of the opinion that uh, in terms of mature, in terms of using a mature ram, that you'd have no more than a uh, twenty five to thirty yours. Uh, if you're using the ram effect with a mature ram, uh, some people are of the opinion that you shouldn't put an immature ram with a, uh, with a, your lambs because they may not be active enough. Um, but uh, that will depend on breed. So ideally, you'd have mature rams with your lambs. But if you have active ram lambs that have had a bit of activity prior to joining the your lambs, they should have no issue either with them. Look at I suppose the usual caveats supply to them about management. You know, infertility, particularly you mentioned with the ram lambs, how well they work and how well they're making them. The use of rattle during that period is another practical tool we should really implement. I believe a rattle should be used when you're joining rams with either yours or with your lambs because it gives many advantages. The main advantage for me would be that uh, you know when the lambs are due and you, if you know when the lambs are rattles and you can determine from that by adding on 147 days when they are due. Ideally, you would change the rattle colours fairly often. Uh, you'd start with the light colours such as ye- yellow first, then green, possibly followed by blue or red and finish up with a black. Uh, I would recommend that you change them every seven days. The advantage of that is that when you're feed, when you're working, developing a plan of for a plan in nutrition for your uh, yours next next spring, that you'll be able to build the concentrate at the right times, so you're not underfeeding some animals and you're not overfeeding other animals. If you have them rattled by week of joining, then you'll be able to group yours next spring by expected week of lambing. Also, if you're scanning, uh, you'll know expected litter size, and then you'll be able to feed, to feed concentrate, and, and determine and develop a, a nutrition plan based on expected litter size and also expected lambing date. The reason knowing the nutrition and not overdoing the nutrition is that you don't want to overfeed animals that will result in dystocia, and dystocia is one of the main main causes of lamb mortality in sheep. So that's a bit of information we can gather now for a bit of effort during that mating period. Yes. Speaking of mating period, Tim, let's talk a little bit about the duration of China. And so in terms of turnout of the rams relative to what we turn out with the mature yews, how long that mating period should be or when it should finish up, maybe relative to the mature flock again. What's your thoughts on that? Well, I suppose some farms like to have the yew lambs and over when they're lambing, that they're lambing uh, during the second half of the mature flock when the mature flock is lambing. And the reason they like to have that is that if they've got excess lambs from the yo lambs that need to be uh, cross-fostered, then there's mature yo's available to do it. But that'll be depend on an individual farm situation, depending on availability of labour and also availability of uh, facilities such as lambing pins, etc. Uh, in terms of the duration, Kieran, I think that when you're using the ram effect, as our studies would show, that 70% of the uh, yo's would be mated within the first two weeks, 90% are mated within the first three weeks. So there's little or no benefit to leaving rams with your lambs for more than four weeks whatsoever. Even longer than that, you're going to just get a few stragglers. You're going to protract the lambing period. And uh, you're uh, at a time next spring when you're after lambing the main yo flock and the, the, uh, the yo lamb flock, uh, I don't think people want to have it protracted much longer than eight, four weeks for the uh, yo lambs uh, mating period. And we also have to factor in you have a more uniform group to work with then next year as well. Oh, you have, yeah. You have a more uniform group to work with. That's correct. Look, in terms of post mate management, what are the couple of key things we need to consider with your lambs? And what should the targets be for them in terms of growth rate or that? From now, we'll say up to scanning or post-scanning, Tim. 
Well, up to post scanning or up to the point of housing, you'd like to have these your lambs gaining about 80 to 100 grams per day because you must remember not only are you feeding a pregnancy, but you're also feeding the yo herself who has to keep growing to attain her, mature, her optimum mature body weight. So good grassland management, adequate grass availability that encourages good intake characteristics, targeting approximately 80 to 100 grams live weight gain. That's what would be my target. If people are housing these yo lambs, I think it's important that they're not neglected and put in the corner, that they should be fed high quality grass silage and also they be fed two or 300 grams of concentrate per head per day up to the point of six weeks prior to lambing. For the final six weeks of pregnancy, we offer the yo lambs the same amount of concentrate as the, their mature yo counterparts, which will depend on the uh, expected litter size. So, for example, a mature yo that is rearing, that is carrying twins, will may get a twenty to twenty-two kilos of concentrate. We would also feed a yo lamb that, that's expecting twins twenty to twenty-two kilos of concentrate during the last six weeks of pregnancy. So, really, up until that point of late pregnancy nutrition, been, that plan being implemented, we're looking at gaining something between half to three quarter kilo a day. And look, we, we you've discussed this before, me that investment in concentrate if you house them. During that mid-pregnancy period, it does pay off long term. That does, yeah, of course it does. Like if you're if you're talking about housing them up from the point of housing up to six weeks prior to lambing, that is probably about thirty to forty days maximum. And if you're only feeding them three hundred grams, that's about ten to fifteen kilos of concentrate, which is not a large amount of concentrate. And at today's prices, a kilo of concentrate is worth about around thirty-five cents per kilo. Yeah, so look, it's a good investment long term. Tim, just something else you mentioned at the start. To an extent, it is a different system. And I suppose in that context, next year when those Joe lambs lamb, how important is their manage, maybe as a, management as a separate entity on the farm? Oh, by all means, they should be managed totally as a separate flock and not mixed with the mature yos. The reason I say that is, remember that they're rearing their first litter and they also have to keep growing themselves to attain their mature body live weight. So ideally, uh, they're managed as a separate yo flock and also yo lambs that are rearing twins should be treated the same way as a mature yo rearing triplets. In other words, they, if they're rearing twins, I would recommend that they're fed a half kilo of concentrate for the first five to six weeks post lambing. Uh, also, the lambs should be kept thriving up to the point of weaning and post weaning. And our data shows that when we adopt these systems and these management practices, that it is that it's readily achievable to have lambs being killed next autumn from the from before the end of the grazing season without concentrate supplementation at carcass weights of 20.5 to 21 kilos per head. Then one other point that always comes up when we're talking about your lambs is the knock-on impact it has on either the performance of hoggets or on the performance for the rest of the lifetime. Some of the elements you've discussed in the systems you've outlined where it's well done, What's the impact it has on it, where your management is correct, your nutrition is correct? And maybe just in that, you might just indicate, like, if that isn't done right, or farms don't have the capacity to get either the post-mate management, the nutrition right, or be able to manage them as a separate group next year, what's the impact that that could have on the subsequent performance? And is that one of the pitfalls in this system? Okay. In this, using the management practices that I've described, we have shown over a number of years that breeding your lambs to lamb at one year of age, that they're only two kilos lighter when they're being joined at 18 months. There is no negative, there's no difference whatsoever on the litter size at two, when lambing at two years of age when you compare it to animals lambing for the first time at two years of age. They remain in the flock for the same period of time. It doesn't It doesn't result in more culling. And there, there, there's evidence also here to show that when they're lambing at two years of age, that if they've previously reared a litter of lambs at one year that at two years of age there is evidence to show that they're better mothers uh, there's better ewe lamb bond and less labor is required compared to when you're lambing a hoggard for the first time at two years of age. Uh, our data also shows that there is no difference in t- the duration that they remain in the flock whether they come into the flock as a ewe lamb or when they come into the flock first time to lamb at two years of age and also there's no difference uh, in, ter- in, in lamb output from two years of age until the point they're cold. So basically, la- bringing in your replacements to lamb at a yo lamb 
results in an extra litter of lambs being produced during their lifetime. And in our study, we found using prolific breeds, you could produce an extra 1.2 lambs per year, in your, per year during our lifetime as it, when the year replacement came in as a year lamb. And when you consider that the mean number of lambs reared per year joined uh, in the national year land flock is actually 1.3, you can see that using prolific U genotypes will have a big effect both uh, as a U prolific U genotype and also if you lamb them earlier at one, at one year of age. And to answer the second part of your question, Kieran, about potential pitfalls, if you join your lambs and you don't look after them and give them preferential treatment, you will end up with your, your, your lambs lambing down at one year of age that are in poor condition. They will give birth to light lambs they will have inadequate amounts of milk, so you may have either have higher levels of lamb mortality, or you'll end up with very small lambs uh, next uh, next uh, November, December, either being sold as store lambs or going to be on a farm for a long time before they reach factory weights. There's also another another potential negative impact is that the yo herself could end up in poor condition, which will result either in a lower level of uh, will, will result in a higher level of barrenness when she's joined at 18 months of age or result in a, lo- a smaller litter size when she's lambing at two years of age. So breeding your lambs will give a lot of rewards, but it's a system that needs to have good levels of management, both prior to the breeding season to get the right weight at joining, during the breeding season to use the ram effect to keep it compact. Between breeding and lambing, you need a plane in nutrition to keep the animal herself growing. And from lambing until weaning, you need to have a good plane in nutrition to keep the yo herself growing and also that her progeny reach good weights at the point of weaning and the target weaning weight for uh, animals from your lambs will be approximately 30 kilos. If it's that done correctly, there's no problem getting these animals finished from a grass-only based system where you would have carcass weights of up to 21 kilos prior to the end of the grazing season. Tim, I think that's a very useful summary of it. You put all in context there at the tail end. Look, it was great having you on today. Appreciate you giving up your time to be with us. Kieran, thank you. Okay, we'll leave it there for this week's episode. Tim has highlighted some of the key factors that can have an influence on the successful mate of your lambs and making that system really work on your farm, as well as some of the potential pitfalls. Well worth considering for anyone embarking on it this autumn. That's it for me for this podcast. For updates on our sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chaga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more episodes.